working on collaborations. Number one, I was at a, a street meeting summit six years ago before Hayden for Hope even was open, and some of the same issues and concerns were brought up. And I will tell you, it was a very different organization at that time. The administration at Haven was very prescriptive in how they wanted you to behave, what they wanted you to do. And I'm telling you, it's a different culture and a different climate now. I've met with several of your organizations. Um, I already told Mark I was going to put him on the spot, but um, I've met with taking it to the streets ministry. And the first time that Mark and Mike came to the campus, they kind of looked at me like, okay, what do you want now? What do you want now? Um, it really was an invitation to collaborate, and I said, I don't know what I want, I know that we need help. We have 1,500 people on that campus experiencing homelessness at any given night, and we can't do it all. And so talking about opportunity, there's great opportunity for collaboration in this room. So working with Paving It to the Streets Ministries, they're now <coughs> under contract with Mother at the Center for Healthcare Services to do some evaluation about what's working on the campus, particular to the courtyard, what improvements need to be made, and then they'll be talking to people that they're, they're feeding on the street too to say, what keeps you from coming to the courtyard? We're a learning, growing organization. If you haven't been to Haven in the past couple of years, uh, I, and you have my personal invitation to please come and see what's different. We've got some fairly monumental changes happening at the courtyard. The original vision of the courtyard was safe sleeping, get people off the streets, um, we're now really looking at how do we effectively engage people. We're opening an integrated care clinic to provide for mental health needs, physical health needs. We're expanding all of the permanent roof line on the courtyard. We're trying to do some beautification on the courtyard. We require a building across the street from the courtyard to provide additional services to the people experiencing um, homelessness on the courtyard, as well as job opportunities and sort of a step-up facility that's a climate controlled facility. So if you haven't been to the campus lately, I, again, I would invite you and I will personally give you a tour, show you around, show what some of the changes are. And one of the messages I've heard from many of the people that are, that are feeding on the street is partly about food and hunger, but it's partly about service, engagement, and fellowship. Um, one of the challenges is many of your organizations don't have capacity to feed five and 600 people which is uh, five, 600, 700, which is what we're feeding on the corridor. I think as a community, we have capacity to feed those five, six, 700, and to create other methods to feed the marginally house, um, those that have to choose uh, a meal over paying rent. So I think there's great opportunity in this room, and I think this is our first opportunity to really think strategically, how do we all work together to make this happen? So I would address any questions you might have. Yes. Can you give me your name again? Yes, my name is Scott Ackerson, B C K E R S O. Thank you. Scott, it seems like this um, is sort of set outside the line a little bit here too. I had the privilege of going to Austin with Scott a few months back to put the community first program they've initiated up there hopefully is now up and running after the final yeah. uh, yeah, status on it at this point. But <clears throat> part of the resolution for helping address the problem of homeless on the street and feeding homeless would be to provide opportunities to move beyond homelessness. And it looks like we might have an opportunity to implement some of the whole house first programs that are beginning in various cities around the country, California, Utah, Austin, where you provide opportunities for people to get off the street, not everybody. You, you look at them and find people who have a desire to do that, to move in that direction, and then as a group, we could provide a collaborative effort to make that happen. Absolutely, and there are housing first dollars that will be coming through the continuum. And part of the, the, the rationale of why I took uh, the job with the center, so I worked with Center for Healthcare Services and Haven for Hope because the center oversees the courtyard. And frankly, many of you know I was one, more, one of the more outspoken critics of the courtyard, so what I learned is if you complain long enough about something, they put you in charge of it. <laughs> with a, a lot of work with the, the South Alamo Region, Regional Alliance for the Homeless, we're really starting to try to target the courtyard and target chronic homeless. And one of the strategies for that is the Housing First Initiative. 
which requires intensive wraparound supports that frankly Haven by itself would, well, is not able to provide, but as a community collaborative, we can certainly provide those supports. And Cortisone Ministries was a, another group that we've had multiple conversations about how do we start to work together again, because we had a, a disconnect five years ago, and we're really trying to rebuild those bridges and partnerships with, with the community. Any other questions for Scott or comments? Or I'm, I'm fairly new to mobile as a, as a core team member. Um, I've just been a volunteer that made sandwiches in the kitchen a few uh, times <coughs> now. But I know that um, Mobile Lives and Fishes founder, um, Mr. Graham in Austin, um, Mobile Lives and Fishes is the, probably the largest, the last members I saw, um, they were the largest uh, organization serving homeless in, San, um, in Austin. They also have a, uh, a program, housing program, uh, incorporating the homeless, building their own homes. And it might be something that those are in charge in the city looking at getting those who want homes a home. Um, it might be worth talking to those yeah. in Austin about that. That project is called Community First, yes. and taking it to the streets ministry hosted us in Quota Zone. I know a couple of our city councilmen are interested in going, going up to take a visit. Um, I believe Councilman Trevino. For sure. Yeah. Um, so we're making arrangements to make that happen. We're, we're looking at that as a potential model, and it's particular to chronic, and it's, it's sort of, um, for lack of a better term, a sanctioned encamp. I mean, people are looking for community, and so if the only place they're finding community is an encampment, and that's what they want, how do we help them to get that, that home and that community? Mm -hmm. 